Jackson gefragt, ob er schuldig ist. The biggest celebrity on the planet is accused of sexually abusing an underage boy. It should be a shock. But this is Michael Jackson. And it's happened before. Ten years ago, the same superstar was accused of exactly the same crime. In 1993, the boy was Jordan Chandler. His father had one question. Did Michael Jackson ever touch your penis? Jordy said yes. He was going to bring Michael down for molesting his son. I will get everything I want and they will be destroyed forever. Guilty or innocent, Jackson paid the boy off around $25 million. Is Michael Jackson the extraordinary target of multiple extortions? Or is he a man who is a pedophile? Jordan Chandler is 23 now. This is the story of what happened to the boy who knows, but never told. Is he just a man in search of playmates? Before he met Michael, Jordan Chandler was just another 12-year-old kid from a wealthy suburb of L.A. He was the only child of a broken marriage. His father, Evan, was a Hollywood dentist. He called himself the dentist of the stars. Evan wanted to make movies, but never quite made it. Jordan lived with his mother, June. She also dreamed of fame. This was Hollywood after all. She'd been a model. She's really tall, pretty, model, and she was really nice. I just remember him rollerblading a lot out on the street. He was a beautiful boy with dark olive skin, dark hair, big eyes. He was not streetwise. He was rather sheltered, or fairly naive, boy. He was just quiet, he kept to himself a lot. I think he had a softness about him that may have attracted Michael. Jordan was also a huge fan of Michael Jackson. In 1992, Jackson wasn't a plastic surgery freak show. He was the king of pop. He was a mega star. Forget A-list. He was beyond A-list. He still was riding high on the success of Thriller, which at that point was the largest selling album of all time. Jordy came from a part of town where celebrity is taken for granted. There are lots of famous people that lived around here. We see lots of celebrities. I mean, we trick or treat and we'd see celebrities, so it was always kind of cool. Even by Hollywood standards, it must have been extraordinary when out of the blue, in May 1992, Jordan's stepdad called home with a once-in-a-lifetime invitation to come and meet his idol, Michael Jackson, face to face. This one encounter would shape Jordan Chandler's life. It was a chance in a million meeting. The story started when Michael Jackson was driving his van. Michael's car broke down. He went to an office building and he asked somebody for some help. He had on a veil, he had on sunglasses. They called a rental car company by the name of Rentarec. Rentarec was owned by Jordan Stepford, Dave Schwartz. When Dave Schwartz heard who his customer was, he called his stepson. You never guess who's coming down here, Michael Jackson. Jordan rushed across town to meet the superstar. Not quite boy meets girl, but still the stuff of Hollywood dreams. Oh, hey. Yeah, what's up? Jackson was famous for making friends with kids. 
So when Jackson took Geordie's phone number, his mom, June, didn't mind. In fact, at that first meeting, she was all for it. I once had a dog named Mikey. I was told by one of my sources that the mother, June Chandler in particular, was pushing the boy on Michael Jackson and promoting this relationship. Yeah, my mom was making me breakfast. For the rest of that year, Jackson was off on a world tour. But everywhere he went, he routinely rang Geordie. Uh -huh. Yeah. Serious. They would be on the phone together for two or three hours at a time, just really basically striking up a very strong friendship. Yeah. Well, is this a part of you, what we were talking about earlier? The pain of growing up and not being able the most to famous pop star on the planet was paying a lot of attention to a kid he hardly knew. And nothing he does is anything short of spectacular. Tonight, Michael Jackson will continue to surprise us with a rare personal tour of his astounding home. And these are sick children, children with cancer, and I entertain them. Uh huh. And uh, they these aren't just great. One minute, Jackson was a mega celebrity on TV, and Jordan just one of a worldwide audience of 90 million. It's incredible. Thank you. Well, it brings out the child that lives inside of everybody. Two days later, Michael was on the phone to Jordy with the invitation of a lifetime. Who would ever think that someone in your, some kid in your family would have the opportunity to go up to Neverland and, you know, visit with Michael Jackson? Geordie's uncle, Ray Chandler, is the one family member who was around at the time who hasn't agreed to be gagged by Jackson. It wasn't just any ordinary celebrity, he was THE celebrity, you know, so that was a big deal. If you're a little kid walking into Neverland for the first time, it, it will be very exciting. Kids get to do anything they want to do, and they get to stay up late and be on rides, and everybody's just having fun. After that first visit, the friendship developed with remarkable speed. Michael became completely involved emotionally with not only Jordan, but also with his mother June, and they became very, very close. He began to refer to them as his real family. Real or surreal, being a member of the Jackson family was intoxicating. Along with being Michael Jackson as a pal, you know, come a lot of special folks. Michael could get you in anywhere, and money was no object. You know, you go to a toy store. The whole place was closed down, and they could wander around at will with no one else there. Being told that you could have anything you want in the whole store. It must have been so extraordinary. The children have the run of the place, and they can just, you know, pull things off the shelves, and anything you want, I want that, I want that, I want that. Just complete irresponsible fun. That's what you get when you become Michael Jackson's friend. You, you get a lot of pure, irresponsible fun. Hanging out with Jackson was great fun, but by Geordie's account, it was about to get troubling. In March 93, Michael took Jordan and his mom to Las Vegas, to his $3,000 a night suite at the Mirage Hotel, each with a separate luxury bedroom. According to what Jordan remembered, it was in Las Vegas that his relationship with Michael you know, sort of intensified. Jordan said that the two of them watched this very spooky movie, The Exorcist, together, in which a girl is possessed by the devil. And that Jordan was really spooked out by it, uh, and that the two of them then spent the night together. Next morning, June went looking for her son, and she saw him coming out of Michael Jackson's room, and she became very upset. Uh, she didn't think that this was appropriate at all. 
But Michael's feeling was, look, either you trust me or you don't. Either you trust me with your child or you don't. This was a crucial moment for Jordi's mum. Should she pack her bag? She confronted Michael, who insisted it was all innocent. She put her faith in Jackson. You really need to choose at this point. And it was June's choice, you know, to continue to allow Michael in her son's life. After that first night in Las Vegas, Jordi claimed it was routine for him and the star to share a bedroom wherever they went, always with his mother's knowledge and permission. After all, everyone knew Jackson loved kids, and although he was 35, people even thought of him as a child. The argument that was made at the time was that uh, Michael was just a 12-year-old himself, and it was the same relationship that two 12-year-olds might have. It was an argument June accepted. Being swept up on the Jackson merry-go-round must have been a heady ride. And when you joined Michael's entourage, some of his celebrity rubbed off. But they went everywhere, and of course, everywhere they went with Michael Jackson, the entire army of media were after them taking their pictures. I mean, they might as well have been big stars themselves, as long as they were in Michael Jackson's presence. To know someone as famous as Michael Jackson and him how, take you on vacation and take you to concerts and take you to all these crazy places that, you know, 12 year olds don't normally go to. I mean, that's a once in a lifetime thing. According to Jordan, there was now another part of his relationship with Jackson that wasn't normal. He said Jackson tried to kiss him. At first, he refused. If I try to put myself in a child's place, I would think that they would be willing to do a lot to foster that friendship. What is encompassed in a lot, though, depends again on what a child's perspective of right and wrong is. If Jody was telling the truth, it may have been impossible to keep saying no. Jackson's generosity had gone into overdrive. Gave both June and Jordy thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars of gifts. There were all those trips to New York, Florida, Europe. But while Jordy hung out with the star, his mother June, it's claimed, was sent off with a credit card. First of all, they were this mother had been taken along on all these trips. 29 carats of brilliant cut diamonds. I think it's really timeless. But wherever they went, the mother and daughter were sent away. You have an outstanding piece of jewelry. What kind of price range do you have in mind? One of the most amazing gifts that he gave her was a groovy and diamond Cartier bracelet, which was quite extravagant. And it would really tend to sweep a person off her feet, I think, and definitely, I think, did that for Jim. Did all these goodies make June turn a blind eye to Jackson and his son? I don't think that the mother believed there was nothing going on. I believe, I think that she rationalized it. I think she was able to convince herself that it was okay because other, other than that, it was wonderful for her. I mean, it was a wonderful, wonderful life. She never thought Michael was molesting her child at that point, or else she, I, I just don't believe she would have allowed it to continue for another second. It would be great to ask her ourselves, but she can't speak for herself since cutting a deal with the superstar. In any case, June Chandler was far from the only mother who let her son share a bedroom with Jackson. 
I think it's pretty safe to say that Jordan Chandler wasn't the first young youngster that Michael took a liking to, that had a friendship with, who had, you know, I mean, Michael Jackson was 35 years old by that time, and, and he had been surrounded by children for, uh, you know, at least 15 years. Ex-cop Robert Wagner was Jackson's head of security. When I first started working in Neverland, I thought it was a paradise, really a beautiful place to work. One of Wagner's duties was keeping a record of who slept where. During my tenure at the ranch, which was three years, December to December, 1990 to 93, there was an excess of a hundred children that were listed in Michael's bedroom. He always had a personal space with adults, but with children, right up to him, touching, trying to be around him all the time, trying to always be with him, and sometimes they got tired of that. I think they got, they got too close. Now Geordie was Jackson's new best friend. He was one of the most frequent visitors. Oh, I saw him several times. He was out there quite often. And he is one of the children that told Michael to go F off and leave him alone. Not once, but twice. The friendship was getting intense. In May 1993, a year after they'd first met, Michael took Geordie's family to the World Music Awards in Monaco. It was here, the boy would claim later, that Jackson dramatically raised the stakes in their relationship. Michael and I were both sick, so Lily and Mom went to go shopping. We just stayed in our room the whole day. We took a bath together. And that's the first time we saw each other naked. This moment would prove crucial in Jordan's allegations against the star. Still, his mother June would claim she noticed no change in her son and saw nothing sinister in the friendship. But whatever she thought would soon be irrelevant. Her ex-husband Evan, dentist to the stars, was now back on the scene. June accused him of neglecting their son, Jordi. But Evan was about to make up for lost time. My recollection was that he was not very interested in, in Jordi prior to the time that Jordi took up with Michael. And as soon as Jordi took up with Michael, Evan became the most interested parent in the world and wanted to spend time with Jordy because that means he spent time with Michael. Now, whenever Jordan visited his father's house, Jackson came too and slept in the same room, along with Jordy's six-year-old half-brother. In fact, Evan Chandler was so keen to accommodate his son's famous friend, he tried to build on a guest wing. To give you an idea of how interested Evan Chandler was in promoting this relationship with Michael Jackson, to make Jackson more comfortable, he decided to build on an addition. Planning permission on Evan's place was refused. So Michael began more or less living at Geordie's mother's house. His chauffeur confirmed he spent 30 nights on the trot there that summer. All of a sudden, Evan changed his tune. He started questioning this unusual arrangement. When he discovered Michael was planning to take his son and ex-wife on the next leg of his world tour, he put his foot down once and for all. It was difficult for Evan to see his son and become so attached to another man. It did definitely seem to be a power struggle. Who was going to be the stronger male influence in Jordan Chen's life. Was it going to be Evan or was it going to be Michael? 
And at one point, Jordan decided that he wanted to be Michael. At the end of May 1993, a tabloid scoop about Jackson's new family was the final straw for Geordie's dad. He didn't want Michael Jackson adopting his boy. His personality was changing. He was sort of becoming a little clone of Michael. He was wearing all the same little military garb. and They had this own little private language between the two of them. No one said it out loud, but Evan's concern was clear. Was this an innocent friendship? Or was it sexual exploitation under the nose of the family? Either way, it was time to put the brakes on. But how? You're claiming that this boy shouldn't be hanging around with this superstar, and yet the boy and the mother are saying, there's nothing wrong, nothing's happening, everything's okay, it's all very innocent. I mean, you're not going to get anywhere with it. Evan Chandler had his suspicions, but he set about tackling them in the most unconventional way. He didn't call the police. He didn't report it to a social worker. Instead, he hired himself a Hollywood entertainment lawyer. He was just probably the worst character lawyer that I've ever met. He just had uh, one of those characters that he was capable of just about doing anything. Why did Evan Chandler call up Barry Rothman, one of the most notorious showbiz attorneys in town? We can't ask Evan because of the gagging order. However, when journalist Mary Fisher looked into the case, she got her hands on a crucial bit of evidence. A secret recording of Evan Chandler. This attorney I found, I mean, I interviewed several, and I picked the nastiest son of a bitch I could find. Once I make that phone call, this guy is just going to destroy everybody in sight in any devious, nasty, cruel way that he can do it. And I've given him full authority to do that. It'll be a, a massacre if I don't get what I want. Evan doesn't spell out on the tape exactly what he's after. Later, this would prove crucial. At this point, you know, he's an angry, very angry father wanting his son back. And now he knows it's Michael's behind this because Michael is living in the house with the boy and the mother. He's living there. But was Jordan all that his father Evan wanted from Jackson? I don't think anyone would draw any conclusion about Evan other than what I drew. I mean, basically, uh, to paraphrase that he didn't care about anything but getting a lot of money. Whatever his goal, Geordie's father needed more to go on. There was only one way to make progress. He needed some kind of confession. Yet again, the way he went about it was strange. First, Evan got custody of his son for a week. Then he took Jordan to his dentist surgery and after treatment began questioning him. My brother was determined to find out, one way or the other, whether there was anything sexual going on. And so he took him in the office, and he, he, he pulled a, a baby tooth. So when that was done, he sat him down. And said, so, look, I, I, I want to ask you a question. You know, and I want you to tell me the truth. And then basically the boy was silent. And you know, did Michael Jackson ever touch your penis? And the boy was silent. Uh, and, you know, his father went through a whole bunch of ways of trying to convince this boy that if it was true, that it was okay to say it. And eventually, the 
kid said to him, you promise you won't tell anybody? You promise you won't hurt Michael? And so he made that promise, and, and the boy said yes. The boy's admission was shocking, but was it reliable? Jordy had always said that nothing had ever happened inappropriate between he and Jackson until after the Evan Chandler and, and Evan's friend who was a dental anesthesiologist gave him this drug sodium amytal which is a powerful psychiatric drug which makes you highly suggestible under it. Journalist Murray Fisher Journalist Murray Fisher published the story, hotly disputed by the Chandlers, that Evan had given his son sodium amytal, a psychiatric drug used to elicit memories. The effects are not reliable uh, in terms of testimony from a person. The brainwashing theory with the drugs? Yeah, that was a good one. Where would he get access to a drug like that? But even if he did, in less than an hour, he plants a story in the boy's head. It's a story that goes on for months and months and months in detail about every place they traveled, every room they were in, every sexual act they did, where it was, how it happened. I mean, you, you know, how's a boy supposed to remember this? It's absurd. Evan Chandler had his confession. His son had confirmed his suspicions. But still, the father made no attempt to contact the authorities. His final move was the most surprising of all, even in Hollywood. He opened negotiations with Michael Jackson for a $20 million motion picture deal. The outside world had no idea of the time bomb now ticking. Two days later, Michael Jackson agreed to a secret meeting with Evan Chandler at the Westwood Hotel in Beverly Hills. Basically, it was the last time that Michael ever saw Jordan Chandler, and Evan said that he was going to bring Michael down for molesting his son. Put it right out there at the meeting. In the end, they couldn't reach any kind of mutual agreement. And had they been able to, the interesting thing about it is this case would have never gone beyond this room. Evan stormed out and took Jordy with him, and Michael just, you know, broke down. But to be told that you are going to be ruined, to be told that everything that you worked for in your life is, is now over, that your life is over, um, was devastating for Michael Jackson. I will get everything I want, and they will be, told, they will be destroyed forever. They will be destroyed. June is going to lose Jordy. She will have no right to ever see him again. Yeah. That's a fact, Dave. That's what's going to that help Michael's career will be over. Does that help Jordy? Michael's career will be over. And does that help Jordy? That's irrelevant to me. And does that help Jordy? That's irrelevant to me. In my mind, if, if my son is being molested by somebody, I am going to kick his ass and make sure he goes to jail. I am not going to try to get a movie development deal out of it. The allegation was the most hideous thing that I think anyone could probably do to a child, and you're worried about money. There was never any mention about, I want justice. You have harmed my child. I want justice. It was only, I want the money. The screenwriting deal was something that was offered by Michael's people. It was never accepted. Ten days of haggling brought no deal, and Evan still hadn't reported his son's claims. He was playing for time, and time was running out. June was on her way to court to win back her son. A bitter custody battle was coming up fast. Evan Chandler had to make his move. It would transform the fates of everyone involved, especially his son. Evan Chandler, Geordie's dad, knew full well what he was doing and he started the ball rolling. They couldn't reach a deal. 
And then all hell broke loose. Geordie's dad turned down Jackson's final offer of a film deal worth just $350,000, a fraction of his original demand. And he made an appointment for his son to see a psychiatrist. Now, for the first time, Jordan made detailed and damning allegations about how the relationship with Jackson had developed. We just stayed in our room the whole day. Yeah, he took me. There were very graphic details about the seduction this boy said he had been subjected to. It got really bad after that. The first kiss, and then the first kiss with the tongue in his mouth. And he pulled back and said, I don't like this. And Michael Jackson, according to the boy, began to cry. He said that Jackson told him, all my special friends do this. What's the matter with you? There was never any uh, suggestion of uh, anal sex, but the, the jury did claim that there was mutual masturbation and oral sex performed on him by Jackson. He took us to Monaco. Jordan was asked to repeat his claims again and again. First to the psychiatrist, then social workers, then police. We believed the boy. The boy was credible. And not only did my officers believe them, but every time he was interviewed, he was consistent in his statements. It was the word of one boy against the world's favorite Peter Pan. Within 72 hours, everyone would know the star famous for loving kids was accused of child sex abuse. All it took was a phone call. I was asleep on a Sunday morning. The phone rang about 8 o'clock, and the voice of someone I knew very well uh, was telling me that there was a search warrant that had gone down. I said, all right, was it anybody important or anything interesting? And he said, does the term Neverland mean anything to you? Entertainer Michael Jackson is the subject of a criminal investigation. Officers armed with search warrants raided Jackson's ranch north of Santa Barbara. We knew they had time to prepare. Uh, our feeling was that it's a strong possibility that something was removed. There was one room dedicated to Jackson's videotape collection. And he had bookcases, built-in bookcases, and one section of those bookcases, there was no videotapes. Police are not talking much about the investigation, refusing to say whether Jackson is a suspect or a victim. The information that came out at first was so vague that it, it raised more questions than it answered. So the phones were started ringing with everyone saying, what is going on? And that, that's, it, was, it, was, it was absolutely huge, because at that point, all we knew was police had raided his house. We didn't know why. Within 24 hours, news was out. Good evening. Michael Jackson is in Bangkok, Thailand tonight. For him to be accused of this kind of crime was huge, huge, worldwide smashing news. People were shocked. They, they couldn't believe that this, this uh, young boy that we all watch grow up in the Jackson 5 could do something like this. Back at home, his status as a pop icon is taking a beating. Michael Jackson still isn't speaking for himself. The kid at the center of the storm watched the same headlines. And the same press were now on his trail. The big question is, who is the boy, where is the boy, and how did it happen? Tabloid reporters around the world would pay any price to find out. At that moment, I think all of Fleet Street loaded up all their money and put it in the 747 and flew it to the United States to start the, the buying of information. It soon paid off. Reporters mobbed the suburb of Brentwood all after one thing, a picture of Jordan. I think the inquirer beat us to the doorstep. Then we arrived, and we had it to ourselves for a little while, but then it just snowballed and trucks were pulling up. A quiet suburban street was suddenly turned into, uh, it looked like Houston Mission Control all of a sudden. 
all the news crews descended on our street and reporters were going up and down the street knocking on all of our doors trying to get someone to speak with them. It is not known where the boy is tonight. We believe his father is at home behind me, but he has not been answering his phone or door. We had never seen anything like this before with all the news trucks and all the reporters and the 24-hour reports and our street on television. I mean, we were even on television. It was like such a crazy feeling, right? Ten-year-old Kevin played with the alleged victim a lot this summer. We were talking about Michael Jackson, except we once did see him go to his birthday party. You saw him? Yes. It was really chaos here, kind of a party atmosphere and chaos at the same time. Inside Jordan's father's house, it was less of a festive atmosphere. It was in the air. I mean, it was thick inside that house. Mentally, um, emotionally, and physically it was a siege. Physically it was a siege because you, you couldn't go out of the house. It was mostly the British tabloids who would invade your pride. Most of, the, most of the press was pretty good. They stayed on, the, stayed on the public street, but the Brits don't seem to have much concern for that. So they, you know, they're definitely the most aggressive. Within 24 hours, Geordie's face was known all around the world. Geordie didn't want any of this to happen. He was very much the reluctant party in all this. He was, his hand was forced by the, uh, by the father. Confused and scared was pretty much his. I mean, he didn't know what was going to happen to him or what, what was going to go. Well, he didn't know where the thing was going. I mean, the adults were confused and scared. The family was in fear. They they were they had a concern and a, I, in my opinion, a right concern, a, a true concern of their safety. Uh, people didn't like the fact that Michael Jackson may go to jail because of the allegations made against him. Fans were. People didn't like the fact that Michael Jackson may go to jail because of the allegations made against him. Fans worldwide were angry and traumatized. They wanted to defend their idol. Some went to extremes. There were death threats, you know, lots of them. I mean, they started coming in by the dozens a day. There was a time when someone left a a rat with its head cut off in a shoebox at the front door. Someone took a couple of shots at the house, but the gun went off twice. My nephew went to rollerblade in the public parking lot that was behind the house, and someone in a van um, just, I mean, just came right at him. It seemed pretty clear that someone was trying to run him down. The fans were, were angry. You just never know when one's going to be crazy enough to do something to hurt you, and it just takes one, you know, it just takes one. What used to be a nice lawn leading from the road, all of a sudden had iron gates around it. Evan became very paranoid. They had a sawn-off shotgun in his room to protect him from the Jacksons' wild and crazy fans. Everybody was armed. Um, not that we walk around with guns in our belts inside the house, but, we, but my brother and I never left the house without them. At first, the press at least were on the side of Jordan and his father. Now Jackson's camp retaliated with a secret recording with Geordie's dad. I will get everything I want and they will be, told, they will be destroyed forever. They have to fire back, they have to come back with something because in the, in the PR battle, they're losing badly. Attorneys for Jackson say the 13-year-old's father is now the subject of an extortion probe. Jackson's private investigator has said all along the accusers were motivated by a failed extortion attempt. If Geordie's dad was hoping to cash in, he wasn't the only one. I love you all very much. Everyone and anyone near Jackson and Jordan suddenly had a story to tell. Very quickly, anyone involved with the Michael Jackson case knew this could mean money for them. Keep wondering, this might keep wondering, this might keep wondering. Michael what we needed next was to get inside Neverland. What is going on behind those big oak doors? Maids, security guards, housekeepers, cooks. Everybody wanted to talk. They wanted to get it off their chest. And somehow they came to me. 
Now, the most shocking revelation yet from Michael Jackson's maid. I saw these mothers taking these boys to the house. Someone just has to have a story, a half-truth. And you mix it with a little venom and you have a tabloid story. Tonight, on Hard Copy, Michael Jackson's bodyguards. They saw it all, they heard it all, they know it all. I had never seen so much money changing hands, people buying information. And it says that Hard Copy agrees to pay the security guards $100,000. Paul Baresi helped some ex-employees sell their story. Plenty crawled out of the woodwork. The Lamarcks were Jackson's cooks. And their story was that they saw Michael Jackson's hand over the crotch of Macaulay Culkin in, in the arcade. Macaulay Culkin said nothing went on. They stood to make $150,000 off that story. But everyone learned a better story could get a better price. They tell the story again, and then the hand goes inside the pants. What it does is create an issue of, are they telling the truth or are they just doing this for the money? But everything's here, in this diary. I swear, I saw MJ fondling the little kid, like his hands... None of this did anything to help the police investigation of Jackson. They sang like a canary to the tabloids. I saw the hand here, I saw the hand there, I mean, uh, I, I saw something going on with Bubbles the monkey. I mean, you wouldn't believe some of the stories that came out, but when it came time to speak to the grand jury, everyone was tight-lipped. Up till now, Jody's mother, June, had always insisted Jackson's friendship with her son was innocent. But after Geordie's allegations went public, she made a dramatic U-turn and started siding with her ex. She had decided to jump on the money bandwagon, which of course required her to then take the position that there was something wrong with the relationship. Here was a woman who enjoyed the good life. She told the investigators, I guess I got caught up in the glitz. Oh, it was a genuine conversion. June believed her son's claims. It cost her her lawyer. He didn't believe Jackson was guilty. I decided to drop the case because I, at the time as an attorney, uh, did not like to be involved in cases that I didn't believe in. Who was telling the truth? It was down to Geordie's word against Jackson's. With scant chance of corroboration. However, in his statement, Jordan told police he'd seen the star's genitals. The first time was in his hotel bathroom in Monaco. He described Jackson's genitalia. Uh, it was unique because of the discoloration, and we then obtained a search warrant to photograph Jackson to corroborate what the child has said. Michael was forced to disrobe and have uh, photographs taken of his private parts in, in a you know, very humiliating um, episode. And it was also, I think, something that triggered in his mind and in the minds of many people around him that the fact that this needs to be settled. Because if this can occur, then what else is possible down the road? It was the most humiliating ordeal of my life. One that no person should ever have to suffer. And even after experiencing the indignity of this search, the parties involved were still not satisfied and wanted to take even more pictures. It was a nightmare, a horrifying nightmare. But if this is what I have to endure to prove my innocence, 
my complete innocence, so be it. When photographing Jackson's genitalia, it did corroborate. In other words, the boy saw Jackson naked. Does that mean Jackson molested a child? No, but it adds to the cred credibility of the child. That's when Jackson backed off. He'd had enough. Suddenly, both sides were eager to cut a deal. In January 1994, two weeks after Jordan's 14th birthday, Jackson agreed to a huge out-of-court settlement. The terms of the deal were a sworn secret. Both sides wanted the case behind them. This boy wanted to get on with his life. Jackson paid the money to the boy in order to keep him quiet, to silence him. Whether what the boy had to say were true or not, he just needed to shut him up. The resolution of this case is in no way an admission of guilt by Michael Jackson. Now the police had lost their only witness. Jordan wasn't going to take the stand. Once that civil case was completed and there was a settlement, then we had a strong suspicion that we no longer had a criminal investigation, that the boy would no longer testify. Are we disappointed? Of course we're disappointed. The case against Jackson was dead and buried. It had cost him millions in yearly payments. There was a check which we've seen for seven million dollars. That wasn't by any means the last check. The, the payment was made in, in stages. Uh, we believe the total amount was going to be 27 million. With the uh, we believe the total amount was going to be 27 million. With the prospect of a long and sensational child abuse trial, that may have seemed like a fair price to a star with Jackson's money. But by buying his way out of justice, guilty or innocent, his reputation would be tainted forever. In spite of everything, Jackson set about proving his life was returning to normal. If normal includes marrying Elvis Presley's daughter, Lisa Marie. Nobody thought this would last. For Jordan, his accuser, the future looked very different. Michael went on with his life, but Jordy did not. Jordy got a lot of money and ended up having a life that was very challenging and difficult for him. Life could never go back to being ordinary. He was certainly very rich, but who could forget this was the boy Michael Jackson paid off. The boy who'd slept with Jackson. He wasn't coming out of the house anymore. He wasn't playing with us. No one saw him. No one ever heard from him. It was just really weird. Some things he had to face. He was bullied at school. He was being accused of being gay and, and teased and ridiculed. Kids are definitely whispering in the hallways and, you know, like, oh my God, he's going to be a millionaire. Just stop coming to school. And that was it. And he never showed up at graduation. He moved, like, quickly after that just so he could find a new place where maybe everyone wouldn't know about what had happened and who he was. For Jordy, this was just the start of a life on the run. His whole life has been changed because of this settlement that he made, and he's had to live like Howard Hughes. And Jordy has vanished to all intents and purposes. That kind of money can buy you a lot of privacy. I think, in fact, he's educated himself to know what do I need to do to stay out of their radar. Jody's 23 now. He spent the last 10 years outsmarting the press and angry fans. The paparazzi have camped outside his place on Manhattan's Upper West Side for weeks without getting a glimpse. 
The last time he was caught on camera was his 18th birthday. I think looking back on it, I would say it was probably the, the, the public side of it, the media frenzy, the hype and, and all that, that had the most long-term effects. I think, I think in the end, you know, being, being part of the media hype was probably worse. He's very close with his father. There is no relationship with his mother, and there hasn't been for about 10 years. If that's right, Jordy hasn't spoken to his mother since the case blew up. We don't know much more. Yet every journalist has a theory on how he's coping with a trust fund worth millions. There's Geordie the Dabbler. He tried film school, and that didn't really work out. He tried learning to be a, a, a pilot. He took a, a, a private pilot's license. He didn't even finish the training on that, didn't like that at all. So he just, he's almost like a playboy, dabbling at this and that, but never really settling down. And then there's Geordie, model citizen. He goes to college. He's getting a business degree. He has an internship now with a firm. I wonder if the other interns working with him realize who he is and how much money he really has. Michael Jackson faces charges of child molestation. If convicted on all counts, Michael Jackson will face more than 20 years in prison. Now the new allegations by another teenage boy to turn the spotlight back on Jackson's first accuser. Well, right now, just about every paparazzi in the world is looking for him. I've been told that there's a bounty on him, that if I could get a photograph of Jordan Chandler right now, it would probably be, bring a total of about a quarter million dollars. A picture of Jordy would be worth an absolute fortune. People want to see what Jordy, not the boy is, but Jordy the man, what does he look like now? This is uh, Jordan Chandler's last known West Coast address. But he's been coming back the boy who Jackson paid off will so always have a price on his head. And, he's, and it's right over here. We have found him in the past. So we're, we're on his trail. I keep wondering, is Michael Jackson the extraordinary target of multiple extortions? Or is he a man who is a pedophile? It's Jackson's first appearance at court. Four months ago, almost exactly a decade after the Jordan Chandler case, another teenage boy came forward with the same allegation. Michael Jackson had molested him. We we're having sort of a rerun of a soap opera that we were all involved in a decade ago. It's all started all over again. Even the same characters are involved. It's the same prosecutor, DA Tom Snedden. Jackson, multiple counts. The same reporters. I didn't look down at his shoes, but the buttons on his jacket, they were big, square, and they looked like they were encrusted with diamonds. It's a boy the same age, making the same allegations against the same star. We're 10 years older, but we all look so fabulous. It's the only one who hasn't aged well is Michael. <laughs> In the last 10 years, Jackson's weirdness has gone into freefall. Is he just a man in search of playmates? He's acquired three children and is mired in debt. Last time he paid the boy off, but this time the law's been changed. So he can't swat away this latest accuser so easily. If there are people who are after Michael Jackson's money now who think he's an easy mark, the law in California doesn't allow it anymore. The new law says nobody gets any money until after the trial is over. So Jackson is set to face his new accuser in court. And he may see another old friend there too. The rumor is the DA intends to subpoena a reluctant Jordan Chandler as a star witness. 
Jordan would rather this latest case doesn't come up. He's been through it once. It was really unpleasant. He doesn't want to do it again. It would be very tough on him. Weren't you the boy whose father demanded $20 million? Weren't you the boy who never testified in court? Weren't you the one that the district attorney wanted to call and you refused to be there? Yep, and there he goes. Oh, he's on top of the car. Well, I can tell you I have never seen a defendant come out and get on top of a car and wave to people. This time... We may get to hear answers to the questions Jackson paid millions to duck back in 1994. My feeling is the only way it's ever really going to end is if Michael is found guilty. If he's acquitted in this case, he's going to go out there and he's going to claim that the first one was a lie too, that the extortion happened, and the whole thing is going to just go be huge again because Michael's going to need to do that. So was this the world's richest pedophile buying his way out of jail? Or was it the scam of the century? Who knows? So far, only Michael Jackson and Jordan Chandler. BBC Three Comedy next tonight on BBC One with the three non-blondes.